So we just saw the finale of Nightfall, and I'm sure everyone's wondering, just what is the deal with the Grail? Is it a real thing, or is it just a myth? And I think what Nightfall is trying to tell us is that it doesn't really matter on some level. Now, why do people want the Grail? They want it for either political reasons to solidify their power, or they want it for personal reasons to save the lives or the health of loved ones. At one point, a character actually says, do not underestimate the power of a symbol. So whether the grail is real or not, the Pope can still use it to unite all of Europe for another crusade. And then when we see Landry give the grail to Joan to try to heal her, it appears to work at first, and she says, I'm healed, I have no more pain. But then she dies. What this seems to be saying is, maybe the grail's not supernatural, maybe it can't create these miracles, but... If you drink it, you're going to be filled with such a love of God and such a feeling of faith and belief that whatever pain you have, you realize it's somewhat temporary and it's trivial, it doesn't matter. And other people who haven't drunk from the grail, they may still see you dying and see you in pain. But if you drink from the grail, you'll be filled with such spiritual enlightenment that it won't matter. But this episode also hinted that maybe there's a supernatural element at play. Now, why does the baby come out unharmed? First of all, the baby's coming out super early. It shouldn't be coming out that early. Like, it's not like six to nine months have reasonably passed since Joan first became pregnant. So the fact that it's coming out so early and then, I should say she, we know it's a girl, the fact that she's coming out so early and also she's coming out unharmed, even though Joan's dead, seems to hint that either it was a miracle and divine intervention or there's something special about Landry. And in some sense, he's either the chosen one or his descendant is the chosen one. And we see this at the end. We see the message that's hidden in the grail, which either doesn't seem to be the real grail or maybe there is no real grail and Landry's the real grail or his descendant. But either way, at the bottom of this note, we do see Landry's name quite clearly. And the fact that the Pope is all ready to kill Landry and then Landry's mom tells him something and then the Pope completely changes his tune, it really seems to imply that either Landry is really special or it was just a great bluff on the part of his mother. But again, the note in the grail seems to indicate it's the former. Now, a couple questions from the episode. Why does Landry throw the grail and smash it? Is he just unthinking, really frustrated? Or is this symbolic of some kind of rejection of Christianity, rejection of God? It remains to be seen. And then Philip's actions really didn't make much sense. So first of all, why does he kill Joan but leave Landry alive? Now this can be explained by he wants to cause Landry pain, he thinks death is too good for Landry, he needs to suffer by losing Joan just like he did. But what doesn't really make sense is why he leaves Joan there still kind of alive because he knows Joan has the grail. So presumably he believes in its power. So the fact really he should make sure Joan's dead and then also take the body so there's no shenanigans with the grail bringing her back to life but maybe he's just not really thinking clearly, so driven mad by revenge. And then also it doesn't really make sense why he spends so much time beating up Landry rather than looking for the grail, because he should know that Joan took it, so he should be using this time to send other of his guards to look for it. But either way, maybe we can just chalk this up to uh, he's so mad he's not thinking clearly. However, a major question that I think never got answered is why they're using this mercenary, Philip and Denogre, they have to use this mercenary army rather than the French army. Like King Philip, Unless he's completely lost control of the army in his country, he should be still in command of not a small force of mercenary fighters, but a massive French army. So why he doesn't have access to this was very confusing to me. It was also confusing to me how Denogre was so easily able to get the grail. Like, I guess he uses this badass female assassin who maybe she's has dark arts or some kind of strange powers that lets her do all these things that it just, it didn't really make sense how he was so easily able to get the grail, but I guess it is what it is. Now, am I excited for season two if we get it? I really am. Um, two of my least favorite characters were Percival and Joan. They're both dead, so I am excited. We seem to have gotten rid of some of the characters that I just didn't personally relate to too much. What do I want to see next season? Denogre, I want to see more of him. I love him, I think. He reminds me so much of Littlefinger from Game of Thrones, just this Weasley, Machiavellian vibe. But I want to see specifically more interactions with him and Isabella. Now, him and Isabella had this weird, sexually charged almost relationship. I want to explore more why he likes her so much, whether he just saw her as a puppet that he could easily control, whether he saw her as being potentially just as ruthless as him and he kind of got, got off on that. Or he just liked her and it's not really explained why. And Isabella, I'd love to see more of her. She was just out of control this season. She would go from being falling madly in love with someone, wanting to run away with them forever, to just in the blink of an eye, be plotting their death. So she's so unstable, a complete wild card, makes the show a lot more interesting. And I definitely want to see more interactions with Dino Gray and Pope Boniface. First of all, 
I just, greatest name for a Pope ever, Pope Boniface. And then also the interactions he had with Denagre this season, I thought were some of the best of the show. Just these power players going back and forth when he says to Denogre, interesting, after all this death and destruction, things seem to have happened just the way you wanted them to. Um, not saying anything, but I just think it's interesting. And it will be interesting to see which way they take it next season. Either they're going to make the Holy Grail very non-denominational, like nothing to do with any specific religion, more just to do with general spirituality and the energy of the universe, or they might really double down on the Christian angle and make Landry the descendant of Jesus Christ or something. I honestly, I'm not sure which way they're going to take it, but I'm excited to find out. Now, what do I think about the season as a whole? There were things I liked, things I didn't like, but there was definitely enough that I liked where, like I say, if season two comes out, I'll be watching.